campaign. Let me um, say how happy I am today that this resolution uh, commemorating the 90th birthday of Mr. Mandela, one of the greatest and most beloved statesmen of the 20th, 20th century, uh, is before us. And I have to uh, thank our chair, Mr. Berman, and of course, uh, Congressman Jefferson, who brought this resolution forward uh, to uh, our ranking member uh, on another subcommittee, Mr. Royce, and to all who have really worked together to make sure that uh, we send a loud um, signal and raise our voices in celebration of a person whose life has uh, triumphed Oh, and we have lived to see the, the day that uh, good has um, triumphed over evil and the indomitable nature of the human spirit uh, prevails in the spirit and in the life of Mr. Mandela. For 27 years, Nelson Mandela's uh, struggle personified the fight against apartheid with a uh, very dignified defiance. He never compromised his political principles or the mission of the anti-apartheid movement. Now, in the 70s and in the 80s, like many, um, I proudly served as a foot soldier in that movement through demonstrations and boycotts, divestment campaigns, being arrested. We all expressed our outrage at the cruelty of apartheid, even while continuing to fight injustices at home in the United States. It was really a very proud day for myself and all of us when the Congress passed legislation in 1986 sponsored by my predecessor, a uh, great statesman, former congressman, now Mayor Ron Dellums, uh, overriding President Reagan's veto, imposing sanctions against South Africa, putting our country on the right side of history. Those uh, sanctions really did help signal the death knell of apartheid. And under uh, the leadership of our own Congresswoman Maxine Waters, uh, I was very proud uh, of the fact that she introduced sanctions in our state of California, in our state of California, and made our state the first state to divest. Uh, and they both very recently were awarded with one of uh, South Africa's highest honors. Not all freedom fighters uh, live to see their struggle bring about the change that they imagined. Nelson Mandela did. He emerged from the infamous Robben Island prison to unite and to lead a nation transformed from racial tyranny to a thriving multiracial democracy. South Africa now guarantees equal rights for all. President Mandela retired from political life in 1999, but he continues to lend his voice and moral authority to causes. May I have an additional um, minute, Mr. Payne? I yield additional minutes to the gentlelady. Gentlelady is recognized for additional minutes. Thank you very much. Uh, as I was saying, President Mandela continues to lend his voice and his moral authority to causes that affect the world, such as the global AIDS pandemic, poverty, and human rights. Nelson Mandela is a genuine hero to the world. So I was last year, quite frankly, to learn uh, when we were in South Africa with uh, Congresswoman Donna Christensen that President Mandela and the ANC were barred from entering the United States unless they received a specific visa waiver certifying that they were not terrorists. So I'm pleased that we were able to finally rectify this indignity earlier this month when we passed in the President's sign, as Mr. Payne acknowledged, the, this legislation to remove him from the ANC and the ANC from the U.S. terrorist watch list. So I have to commend uh, our Chairman, Mr. Berman, uh, Mr. Royce, Chairman Thompson, Chairman Conyers, again, Mr. Payne, for their efforts to make sure that this occurred before Mr. Mandela's 90th birthday. Just as that legislation was a fitting tribute to his legacy, this too is an opportunity for us to express our appreciation to President Mandela for his unfailing belief in the power of people to change. Thank you very much, Mr. Payne. Sorry, yields back to time.